with Lean Frontiers. We do have Jim Huntsinger and Sam Wagner here with us today, and they are going to talk a little bit about Skills Lab um, and what we are going to offer with this product that we have. And Jim, I believe we are ready to go. All right. Thank you, Skylar. And uh, hello, everybody. Thanks for joining in. I'm Jim Huntsinger, Lean Frontiers, along with uh, Sam Wagner, who's uh, representing the TWI Institute. And uh, Sam and I do have some content we can go through, but before we got started on it, we wanted to see just if uh, anybody has any questions. Let's open it up to some questions. You can um, uh, put it into the chat um, or you know, turn your camera, raise your hand. Um, Skyler is going to kind of watch it. I, I'm driving the PowerPoint, so my, my screen isn't showing all that. Let's see. It doesn't look like we have any chats yet or questions. So go ahead and move along and we'll see if any come right. up. Yeah. You know, ask questions as we go along as well. So, um, so, so Jim, uh, how did yeah. skills lab come about? Yeah. So kind of the, kind of the way it evolved, it evolved over time and kind of the way it came about is for quite a few years, we've been running a, a workshops that we call skill point. We have one skill point for job instruction and a skill point for Toyota Kata that uh, Sam for quite a few years now has been facilitating um, those, particularly on the on the 10 hour side. And then also when we go out and do the training and th those have been really good. They're very focused, obviously, one's focused on uh, Toyota Kata, one's focused on job instruction. But as we go through the work on it, because we work on really a, a, a real life simulator and we go through improvement cycles and other things, some of these other skills that are foundational, um, JI being one of them, Toyota Kata being one of them, are actually needed. So they'll go make some improvement cycles and actually, ideally, they should be using like JM or sometimes they might run into some other um, um, problems where maybe they need JI. So really just evolved over time is really if you're trying to, if you're trying to develop the skills for continuous improvement or, or some people say trying to develop a culture of continuous improvement, you really need to know all these skills and also know how to use them in tandem. Yeah. So really that became the, the impetus to um, developing a um, skills lab um, on getting everybody to know, know what, in a way, I would say these five skills are job instruction, job methods, job relations, improvement kata, coaching kata, and just even coaching on how you deploy things horizontally and vertically in an organization from, from, uh, from an uh, not just improvement standpoint, other standpoints, but really support your, your lean efforts. Um, and that's really how it got started. Okay, so, so what problem then does Skills Lab address and who, who's, who's it targeted toward? Yeah, um, you know, Skills Lab, we're kind of trying to target it towards, you know, you know executives, uh, managers, um, people that are, you know, in charge of, I guess, this type of development in an organization. But really, the, again, back to the, these fundamental skills, if you look at any of these um, functions, tools, systems within a, within a lean organization, all these things are really underpinned, ideally, by these fundamental skills in order to solve problems, in order to use scientific thinking, in order to be systematic, um, it's, it's, it's important to have these skills and utilize these skills whenever you're trying to, um, you know, as, as a slide up there shows, trying to develop these different aspects of the lean enterprise. These are truly fundamental skills to be used for that. And, you know, there's some organizations that, you know, may be doing a lot with JI, but ideally, are they using JM? Are they using JR? Are they using improvement kata and so forth? So um, really that's what it's about is trying to get people at that, at that starting level where they know what they are, they've had some experience with them, so they can have some confidence to go out and do that for their own organization. And actually something else with the skills lab is, is um, part of it as well too, is, is a framework. So we'll go through and show people a framework. We, want to, we don't want to say we're gonna tell them how to do it because every organization is unique. Every organization has their own objectives and existing culture and priorities, but we wanna teach a framework that organizations can use to build their own, um, um, I guess, ultimately ability to deploy and make these changes and get these skills in order to support all these things that they're doing, like on a slide is, and, and more than just that, to be able to do it and do it effectively. Yeah, there are a lot of items on there to, to understand. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so, and, and, but, yeah, and that's just, that, like I said, a handful of all the different things that 
Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, so why this like particular? Here. Yeah, Jim, why this particular approach? Uh, really, I think kind of takes to the next slide. Is is the reason why is this? So again, what we're trying to do is get people not to have these skills, but really get these skills to to uh, to be habits. Um, you know, what's a habit? You have a little definition here. Applying a skill without thinking about it. So if you think in sports, when you practice. You know, I guess if it's a basketball, you practice dribbling, you practice passing, you practice these fundamental skills. So ideally in the game circumstance, you do it without thinking and you do it very well. Not just do it, but do it very well. Um, and the only way to get to where you get yourself to that point is through practice. So that's probably a, a, certainly a key point is, you know, what's the key to being successful with, with these skills? Three things and probably more practice, practice and practice. Um, and that's why with the, with the skills lab is why we do, why we have the, the simulator, which is really real to life. So people just don't learn the skills, and, but they will, but they can go out and practice them over and over. We have multiple rounds where people go through and practice these skills. And it's really this is, is the learn by doing. So if you look, you know, if you look at, they say, you know, at Toyota, Toyota, doesn't, if you went to work for Toyota or one of their group companies, they don't go, okay, you're hired. You're going to go through these classes and, and, and learn these different things that we do. No, what they do is go, um, well, let's go work on something together. Whoever your manager, your, you know, sometimes they're called coach or mentor manager is, is let's go work on a project together, which is that little cartoon kind of illustrates is you do the work and then they help, you know, coach you, mentor you through it uh, and a lot of times they don't necessarily know the answer but that's where they get into the questioning thing they'll ask you questions to help you think about it think it through take the next step think through it analytically so really it's back to the whole principle of learn by doing how do you learn these skills you learn them by doing them and um and ultimately for those of you familiar with toyota kata and the book mike rother published um you know, a number of years ago now but this is always my favorite i guess diagram in there is this one current condition, trying to get to the target condition, and what do you got to do? Well, you got to traverse the unclear territory. You don't, like traditionally, you don't map out this straight line that you go down. Anybody that's done any project work knows it's never a straight line where you hit all the targets and all that. You're really meandering through a lot of area that you're not familiar with. Well, these skills help you do that in a very systematic, a, a, a very systematic analytic way, basically utilizing scientific thinking to progress your way through it, to iterate, running experiments and learning from them, to iterate through and learn as you go. Again, back to the learn by doing. And that's really the trust in the process. You've heard, maybe many of you have heard that term, the trust in the process. And really trust in the process is a trust in utilizing these skills, a trust in these skills through a process to be successful. And, um, and again, I guess that's really the approach we take with skills lab and even the skill points is truly learn by doing. And I guess um, one other aspect that I'll go through is kind of maybe go in a little bit about these, a little bit about these different skills and some of the role they play. Um, so a lot of times I've heard people work over years. They say, well, should we be doing Kaizen or should we be doing standard work or, you know, what should we do or start with? Well, the next answer is, is well, one, one can only exist with the other. They coexist. They're completely codependent on each other um, to go through that process. And to talk about that a little bit more up there on the, this lean slide gets a little busy, but it illustrates um, kind of these skills as these skills, these, you know, five, maybe five, maybe slice six of these skills, the JI, JM, and JR, and certainly the improvement kata uh, skill um, or behavioral pattern and the coaching kata and really just how do you coach people along as well, which obviously the coaching kata plays a role in that. Well, really, if you take these skills, when you go out kind of the initial, go out and initially try to figure out what's going on, current condition, target condition, um, trying to think what's the, what's the one, I guess that one of those was from the, the value stream mapping and all that, but whatever your term is, is usually you find things are somewhat chaotic. Well, the first thing you want to do with these skills is really try to stabilize the process. Even before you really truly make improvements, incremental improvements, you really need to stabilize the process. That's certainly one thing Ono always said is in order to make improvements, you really need a stable process, something stable in place to work from. So you certainly utilize these skills to just stable the current condition. You may find the current condition pretty chaotic. 
And then from there, once you get you know something reasonably stable, then you could really start making those incremental improvements, uh, measurable improvements. You know, again, current condition or current state to get up to the target condition. Well, how do you do that? Um, you do that through um, iterative steps, but it, it somewhat depends. So what do you do? Well, it depends. And this again, we're getting experiences. Is, is you know, one one will say is well, if, if someone can't do it, okay, well the countermeasure would be JI to train them how to do it. You know, there's steps underneath that, but how to do it. Or what if they won't do it? Well, the countermeasure would be using the using the steps of job uh, um, relations. Or right, currently it's too hard. Well, then maybe you need to go through and um, um, use JM to make improvements. And there's also, I kind of said sub-improvements with the improvement kata, but if you, if you look back historically at Toyota, they say, oh no, Ono oh, didn't you know, drop the JM pretty quick. Well, actually he didn't. What he really started to do, because JM in and of itself is a very point focused improvement. It's actually, it's actually an IE, industrial engineering uh, with a lot of history behind it, good tool. But what he really was looking at is what we would call today the, the value stream. How do, we, how do we make improvements on this value stream? How do we look at this bigger picture to make these incremental improvements along that value stream to get it to where we want to do, or, or ideally, how do we make things flow? You look at a little bit. So the JM, the questions and the behavioral pattern with it is really, to, uh, today is really embedded, I say embedded, utilized for that kind of larger picture. You can use it at the point as well too, but you can use it for the, um, the larger picture, which the uh, improvement kata is really taking a look at that as well. You know, what's our target condition you want to get to? Here's where we're at. Well, there's a lot of steps we got to go through to get to that point. And then standard work is really, uh, uh, I like, I just like this. Uh, um, this is a diagram I took from Patrick Graup at the TWI Institute and modified it for this purpose. But I like this. Standard work really becomes this wedge that keeps you in place as you make these iterative improvements in whatever you're doing. And as you can see there, all these are four-step methodology based on a scientific method, scientific thinking, or you know, we more commonly use the plan, do, check, act um, cycle. The standard work is really to get you and hold you in place. If you look, look at most organizations, their improvements tend to arc. You get better, but then it tapers off. You know, if you're lucky, you can sustain it, but usually they taper off. Well, utilizing these skills is how you keep it on an upward trajectory, not losing ground, maintaining the ground you've gained. Um, standard work. And to kind of zoom in on that a little bit, is the, and of course, of the um, job instructions is part of that stabilize. Where are we at currently? Let's get everybody doing it the same way. Job methods or the improvement kata is how do we increment, how do we make the improvement up? And then again, go back, how do we restabilize to that new way of doing it? Job instruction. And you can look at job relations. How do we create an environment where people thrive in that, where you resolve problems, you resolve people problems, you keep things. Um, on, a, on a pace and in a circumstance where people can thrive, again, thriving out in clear territory, make these improvements, standardizing and all that. And obviously, if you look at the coaching kata, things like that, those are also two patterns that help maintain all that. The question to get people to think, to get people to analyze, again, in a scientific um, thinking way and improvements. And ultimately, if you look through all these things in a diagram is, you know, how important coaching is. We said that up front, the learn by doing, oh, let's go work on a project together. I mean, a team lead with his team members, a group lead with the group leaders or maybe the team members, managers with, you know, their subordinates or their group leads and so forth is the, the question, questioning, the coaching, the supporting, the helping remove obstacles you know, the, the whoever's up above. And that's really kind of to create this environment. And essentially, this is what we're trying to teach in skills lab. Teach these skills, how you use them, how you use them in tandem, because it's which one do we use? Well, the answer would be, well, it depends. What are your circumstances? What are you observing your circumstances that will help, you know, tell you what you need to do? And uh, so I think that's, yeah. So I think that's with that. So with that kind of explained through what, you know, I guess the skills and, you know, a little bit about their purpose and, and role of what we're trying to teach. Um, actually, Sam, I, I want to ask you questions because Sam has lots of years of experience as an operation manager. Actually, before Sam started, um, you know, training and working in the in skill point in the skills lab with us, 
he was an operations man that implemented and trained on these things, actually, like you, you most of you folks out there um, doing this. So what are the, some of the benefits you've seen from Sam, from your perspective as a practitioner and also now as a trainer involved with this on uh, the skills lab or skill point approach to learning? Yeah, well, um, you know, the biggest one you, you kind of already mentioned, Jim, is that that approach to learning of learn by doing. And we understand learn by doing is effective. It's a very effective way of learning. Um, and the, the skill point and the, the real life simulator, you know, helps you gain that um, practice um, and learn by doing, um, it, you know, and, and uh, by doing it kind of offline this way, it doesn't really interfere with your ongoing operation at, at your own organization. Um, yet, yet it still feels like a real manufacturing, a real production environment, um, because uh, these things are fairly, fairly big, you know, fairly good sized. Um, they're like what three quarter, three quarter size uh, of a of a truck cab, right? Yeah. Um, you know, yeah. so it's it it feels like a real production environment, and and it also, you know, feels like a lean environment. It has all the uh, you know, all the, the, the some of the th uh, features of a, of a lean environment that, you know, the and on poles and, you know, you're, you have your, your, uh, your people there, you know, the, the uh, group leader and the team leaders and, and you're doing the, the uh, tiered meetings, you know, and, and so, so you get to experience all that all together and see, you know, and, and maybe there are things that, you know, I've been to half a dozen different companies, I think in the last couple months um, and, all of them are missing something in, in all these features and uh, in the integration of the whole thing together, or um, they, they have an inadequate understanding of some of those pieces. They may have part of it in place, but um, they, they may be either misunderstood or um, haven't quite fully understood the power of, of each one of these um, uh, key elements that you've been uh, discussing here, Jim. And so, uh, you know, the, the, the simulator acts as um, almost like a, you know, we talk about a dojo for, uh, for learning, you know, and training, um, where you can kind of do it in a safe environment. Well, this, this simulator is like a super dojo, you know, yeah. it's got everything um, associated, you know, with a real production environment that you'd like to see. And you get to practice it all right there, hands on. Uh, so, so that's really neat. It's a, um, a neat application. Uh, to you to be able to use and of course then you get multiple iterations and you know as we as we focused on um, say just job instruction you get uh, way more iterations of, of you know job practicing job instruction than you otherwise would in a in a training session so um, uh, you know with the with the skills lab you probably won't get uh, you, you know you'll you'll get some practice with the kind of the integration but of course you're not going to get you know, you're not going to have the skill in every single thing that's on there, but you'll have a much better understanding of them, a, a much better awareness of what they are, how they're applied. Um, and, and then you can take that back to your own organization and, and look to see, hey, you know, where do we need to shore things up the most? You know, what's, yeah. what's, where's the area that we probably need to start in terms of um, progressing and, and moving our continuous improvement uh, process uh, ahead? So, um, the, you know, those are those are some of the things that uh, that I see uh, that are really beneficial for uh, the the uh, skills lab and, and the, the um, skill point uh, application. That's so actually something you brought up, Sam, that made me think is, yeah, even though the line set, like what you described, you did a great job to describe the line set up. And even with a lot of, I guess you might, whatever you want to call it, lean attributes in place, it's actually quite amazing when people first start out how, in a sense, bad they are, even though the, the line itself has a good design and they basically right. utilize these skills and increment up to um, hit, hit, we have targets, I mean, measure, me, measurables and, and of, uh, production yeah. quality, safety things and all that on how much they improve it, even though you could say from a physicality standpoint, the line is designed well, but it shows just how much improvement you can make utilizing these skills, again, in a very systematic manner, which also makes me think of kind of even, even asking that question again, again, with your background, you know, in, as a practitioner and also with the uh, skill point skills lab is um, this approach to learning some, some things we've just observed that were not necessarily 
trying to succeed with, but ultimately the, the, the approach and the simulator does um, actually achieve this? Maybe touch on some of those. Yeah, you know, you, you bring people together from different organizations and it's really been interesting to see how they gel together as a team and how they learn from each other. So we get a lot of group learning, you know, so it's not only learn by doing, but learn from each other. Um, and, uh, you know, those mantras uh, um, really help uh, people to, to be able to understand better and, and see how it's applied in different applications and hear about that from others. Um, and, and then, you know, surprisingly, even after the, the training is over, after the workshop is complete, um, you have some networking so, uh, going on so that, you know, you, you get a problem in the future after you get back to your own organization and, and you're looking at it or you want to bounce an idea off somebody, you, you have a, a network of people with some common background and common understanding that you can go to and, and, uh, and help. And, and get help. Um, so that's been a really neat uh, thing that we've seen uh, um, as well with this. Yeah, and, and of course, good. you know, Jim, it, it, the, it's so much, uh, it, it, it's inspiring to see all the fun people have with yeah. this as well. You know, learning should be fun. And yeah. certainly the people who have attended uh, these skill points, they have fun. Yeah, we, we always see, if not the first day, certainly by the second day, uh, these people, like I said, from different companies, they're behaving with each other as if they've been working together for years. And that's yeah. that's part of the fun. And even though sometimes they struggle with things, but they they everybody's upbeat, like I said, having a good time. Even get the different teams that, that are doing a little bit of competitiveness, friendly competitiveness, they do. And like, as you said, a number of these teams of uh, or people that have attended have created their own little network that they carry forward after the after these that they help each other through each of their own companies um, um, as they go up, go back to organizations and try to develop these skills and a uh, deployment plan to do it. And that's always fun that these things self self organize and, uh, and do that. Like I said, from a networking and learning standpoint, it carries on forward, not only within an or organization, but with their people, their colleagues they met at the, at the event. Right. Okay, good. Skylar, any questions that have popped up or does anybody have any questions? We don't have any questions thus far. Okay. So Jim, how do I sign up? Well, um, I'll, I'll, I'll show you. One thing, one thing, maybe one last thing I'll kind of maybe summarize with like to do is uh, like to say this, if you're not using TWI and Kata the same in three months, that's a problem because it's back to the learn by doing, practice, practice, practice. You need to get to it um, in order to get effective, comfortable, effective with it and confident with it. But the other thing that is if you're using TWI or Kata the same in three years, that's also a problem. And I know that somebody, um, um, I know Sam, I think you remember Jeff Mailing. Yes. Yeah. From originally with, with IBM, who was when we 15 or 20 years ago, TWI kind of came back in one of the first people to do it. And he was actually an engineer and an engineering manager and all that. And a number of years ago, he told me, you know, when I first started this TWI journey, he goes, I couldn't have fathomed how I would have applied this to not just to the shop floor stuff, but to projects, engineering projects and things like that he was doing. But he said, now here years later, he goes, I can't imagine how I would do my, these projects without these skills that I utilize now. So yeah, that's, yeah. that's that proliferation as you get the, the, experience and skills with back to that one of the slides we had up front when you're looking at Hoshin Connery and all those other more systematic um, attributes or or tools or systems that you're using as a lean enterprise how these things play a direct underlying role in being effective in in doing those for your organization yeah so I think you know we, we we start learning um through a, a process that's fairly repetitive you know yep. and and that we can, uh, you know, easily apply it and apply the principles. And then when, once we've practiced it and applied it a bit, we get to understand it more deeply. And then we're able to see how we might apply it in uh, other situations and how, uh, how to, how to uh, adapt to, to some of these other situations. 
Um, so um, well, that's one of the things that people have a hard time with at the at the very beginning is, well, yeah, this is only for, you know, highly repetitive operations and we don't have any of those, you know, we're a yep. custom contract manufacturer. And so every, t every product we make is a little bit different. Well, you know, I, I uh, applied all of these in a custom contract manufacturing environment. And uh, I can, I can assure you that they, the thinking patterns that we're learning certainly apply to, um, you know, a, a wide range of, yeah. of uh, uh, different applications. Um, the application that we have with, with SkillPoint is one that um, is more controlled and allows us to, to uh, uh, have multiple iterations. And so that's, that's why it's uh, such a, a good application to learn from, to have that initial learning and get that, get that practice so that you start to understand the patterns and understand the principles behind them. And yeah. then after you've done that and learned that, you're able to then take it and apply to a different situation um, that you may have. Exactly. And actually, a question did come in asking, but you're kind of you're kind of touching on is, uh, uh, do you only simulate an automotive process? And the answer is, it's somewhat. The answer is in the simulator, yes, and it's really kind of assembly. Even though I guess the particular widget, I guess, is kind of like that. But it's assembly. But um, and but the I guess. The reason for that is one, that's what the simulator is. But the other one is, I always like to say this, as Sam was kind of touched on, anywhere there's people and processes, even if it's information systems, it's, it's applicable. Um, really, the simulator is a backdrop um, in order to learn the skill. So what we're teaching here isn't, isn't the you know, automotive or assembly or production. It's, it's the skills of this, and it happens to be a backdrop. So we've had people in healthcare that have gone – gone through it as well and they certainly come in a little bit skeptical because again they're coming from a healthcare background and with with the simulator it's all that but as they get in and you learn the process then those light bulbs start going off and they get okay now i understand it's about the process of improving processes and thinking things through from an analytical a scientific thinking standpoint yeah yeah we've had people from a broad variety yeah. of background we've had teachers in there right uh, yes. Public school teachers have come in um, and, and taken it and been able to apply it to their situation. Um, you know, uh, so so it, it uh, applies to, you know, anywhere where there are people and processes, um, you can apply these patterns. Yeah. OK. Any other questions, Skylar, that you've seen? Nope. That is the only one so far. OK. Well, I'll, I guess the answer of the question Sam asked a moment ago is uh, get the get it on. There we go. Is um, yeah, where can they where can they go uh, learn and learn more about Skills Lab and and sign up? Well, you can go to certainly go to Lean Frontiers and and uh, the Skills Lab um, site on uh, Lean Frontiers leanfrontiers.com backslash Skills Lab dash two, um, and you can learn a lot more about it. Um, there and the first skills lab will be October 17th through 19th um, to do that and you could you could register there through the website as well and uh, for the rest of this week if you if you want to register and you could use the promo code WBNR and get $250 off uh, per registration as well so we'd love to have you um, we'd love to you know ideally we want to get people out there utilizing these skills so their own organization and their lean efforts become that much more effective. Um, and I think with that, unless anybody else has any questions, um, I'd like to thank everybody. You know, thank you, Sam. Thank you, Skylar, for uh, joining in with us. Did another question come in? Okay. All right. So everybody, thank you very much. We look forward to hearing from you. Even if you have even other questions, don't hesitate to reach out to us as well so thank you Jim. thank you sam we are right on the mark um there will be a recording for this 24 to 48 hours the link will come directly from me i will email it to you don't forget you can use the promo code wbnr within the next 48 hours probably until friday to receive the 250 dollars off of your registration for skills lab again thank you jim and sam and thank you for everybody who attended today we will see you all soon.